Well, hello everyone. In mid-December, I did a video about the sudden I-95 closure in Rhode Island between East Providence and Providence over the Seekonk River. And just yesterday, Rhode Island DOT announced that they may have to just completely demolish and rebuild the bridge in its entirety. Quite a shocking turn of events, but perhaps not surprising. And tonight to the eye-opening news that the Washington Bridge may need to be completely demolished and rebuilt. That announcement today from Rideout Director Peter Alviti, who stressed that no decision will be made until engineers are finished with a comprehensive look at the bridge's structure. So in this video, I want to cover what are the key questions really that need to be asked at this point. And really looking beyond the public statements made by Rhode Island DOT and other government officials, from a more technical basis as to what realistically is likely to happen with this bridge project. So a bit of a recap. On Monday, December 11th, 2023, Rhode Island DOT announced that this bridge was going to be suddenly closed due to breakage of anchor rods in the cantilevered bridge deck at Span 7, which is in the middle of the river. This damage to the bridge was incidentally discovered by a junior engineer while working on the eastbound bridge. There was excessive amount of deflection under roadway traffic, so the bridge was closed three days later after this observation was made on Monday, December 11th. And yesterday, on Monday, January 22nd, they announced that they may be back to square one on this project. It could be a reconstruction of various components of the uh, bridge structure, or it could be a complete rebuild of the entire bridge. So this bridge, has 96,000 daily vehicle crossings. When they closed the westbound lanes, it took them a couple of weeks, but they rerouted westbound traffic over the eastbound bridge, which, which cuts the capacity of the bridge in half in terms of amount of vehicles it can handle a day. And this has caused, as would be expected, long delays for commuters in the area. So this bridge was built in 1968. As I mentioned in the previous video, most highway bridges in the United States were built with a design life in mind of 50 to 60 years. This bridge is 56 years old now. And uh, immediately upon closing this bridge back in December, Rhode Island DOT officials, in fact, their director, Peter Alviti, said that the July 2023 inspection showed that this bridge was in good condition. When in fact, the inspection report said it was in poor condition, which would be structurally deficient, but not in such a condition that it'd have to be closed on an emergency basis. So Rhode Island DOT put it out there for public consumption that, hey, since the July 2023 inspection didn't show any broken anchor rods, there must be this uh, phantom overloaded truck that illegally crossed this bridge and did all this damage. Uh, the critical finding was the failure of, a, of several critical um, structural components on that bridge. The failure is such that uh, it could potentially be the cause of a catastrophic failure. Is that the last inspection on this bridge happened in July. It was in good condition to when it, if there were no failures at the locations that the failures took place. Once in a while, an extraordinary event will happen, as we, as we, as our engineers are telling us happened in this case some kind of outside force that was extraordinary over and above the normal use of everyday use of the bridge happened between July and now. That's the best information that they have that they're giving to me that I'm passing to you right now. Well, now that the damage and the problems with the bridge are obviously much more extensive than these few broken anchor rods would indicate, you don't hear the DOT officials say anything about an overloaded truck at this point. As I mentioned in the previous video, there's areas of exposed reinforcing steel, corroded reinforcing steel, corroded structural steel. This bridge is in really bad shape. And a lot of this poor condition for the bridge was caused by corrosion, no doubt related to the heavy road salts that are applied in the winter, just as they are throughout the Midwest where I live. So I want to just point out what I think are the key aspects of this whole thing. First of all, Rhode Island DOT is had put that narrative out there about this rogue truck that did all this damage. They're not talking about it now for, for obvious reasons because you cannot pin the apparent damage and 
poor condition on this entire bridge on one heavily overloaded truck. So the obvious question is, were these anchor rods, in fact, broken during the July inspection and it just wasn't noted? And back in December, when they announced this emergency bridge closure, Rhode Island DOT officials floated this picture showing, hey, here's the anchor rods from the July inspection and here's the anchor rods now and they're broken. Well, the problem is the angle of the photo from the July inspection doesn't show the same location or any location where the rod's broken. The, the, the viewpoint of the person taking that photo is such that they couldn't see the, the location in question. So you could chalk that up to either Rhode Island DOT officials trying to simply mislead people, or it was just sloppiness to basically show as proof that everything was fine in July when in fact the photo doesn't show that whatsoever. So the big question I think is, if this was missed in the July 2023 inspection, in fact that the bridge was in such bad condition that it needed to be closed on an emergency basis to prevent a catastrophic collapse, what does it say for the other bridges in Rhode Island that have been inspected? Are those inspection reports to be trusted? Rhode Island has the highest percentage of structurally deficient bridges in the nation at 22%. So if 22% of Rhode Island's bridges are structurally deficient and they're relying on inspection reports to determine, yeah, they're deficient, but they're still able to carry traffic, just as the I-95 bridge over the Seekonk River apparently indicated that it could continue operating. I think that's the most important question about this whole thing right now. The state officials simply have to answer that question. Was this missed in the inspection? I, I can't put it any more simply than that. Now, let's talk about the implications for the I-95 bridge and for you folks that have to deal with this backup and much longer uh, commute times in the area. If they decide to replace the bridge, which I think this is where this is definitely headed, from a, you know, they'll probably get more funding quicker from the federal government if they have to replace the thing on an emergency basis. They have to complete their study and make a decision as to what needs to be done. And I can tell you most certainly that this bridge is gonna be replaced. So the next question is, is there an existing design for a replacement bridge sitting on the shelf? It's probable that no such design has been performed to date. I remember back in 2009, during the recession, there was a lot of federal funding to stimulate the economy in uh, construction fields by funding what at the time was called shovel-ready projects. And most of those involved uh, paving jobs. Very few involved reconstructing bridges because there weren't a lot of bridge designs that had been completed just sitting on the shelf. So I think if the design has not been performed for this replacement bridge on I-95, you're looking at a minimum of three to six months to complete the design process. So the next question is, what if any environmental impact studies have to be performed? I don't think uh, a full-blown EIS would be needed, particularly on an urgently needed replacement bridge. But at the same time, somebody's going to have to to waive the full-blown EIS requirements to get this thing moving. And that's not necessarily a certainty. Then you have the bridge demolition. I think that could take easily three plus months. And then the actual construction, I think, would take somewhere from 12 to 18 months, but I think it would include the demo. So for demo and reconstruction, I think you're looking at every bit of 18 months. And that, again, 18 months doesn't start elapsing until they've completed their design, they've completed any required impact studies, uh, environmental impact studies, and they've secured funding. You know, securing funding, even if they've made a decision at what needs to be done, uh, is not a streamlined or quick process. So again, Rhode Island DOT really needs to up their game in terms of being open, honest, and transparent in terms of what they know and what they're likely to do with this bridge. And the fact that this Pete Alviti wouldn't answer detailed questions about what they found uh, during their inspections to date is not very reassuring. You know, I mentioned earlier that when they floated this picture of the before picture of the broken anchor rod, supposedly from the July 2023 inspection, where clearly you couldn't see the, the location of the anchor that was in question, whether that was deliberate to mislead people or just uh, incompetence that someone didn't notice that 
the picture, in fact, doesn't show what you're saying it shows. You know, this Pete Alviti is a degreed engineer. He's worked at, as an engineer for decades. So that doesn't exactly instill confidence. I mean, he doesn't have plausible deniability here saying, well, I'm just a, a technocrat. I'm not a, an engineer or, you know, I'm just relying on information provided by others. That, that won't fly here. He's an engineer. If he's presented with something that doesn't make sense, like, oh, a heavily loaded rogue truck did all this damage to the bridge. Okay, where's the evidence? You know, there's some pushback rather than just say, well, this is what the engineers told me and this is what I'm going to tell the public. Now let's talk about costs. Again, no costs have been released in terms of what a replacement would be here for this bridge. But based on my experience, I think you're looking at somewhere around $100 million. So that's a quick update. I wanted to give a shout out to the channel members. We have a single tier membership to the channel that really helps support what we do here on a weekly basis uh, in terms of getting out at least one video a week. Also, if you'd like your free digital copy of my largest civil engineering disasters from the past 100 years, there's a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone and please be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe.